Okay, guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video. And today we're going to be taking a look at this PlayStation 4 updater, which, if we can see up there, hopefully you'll be able to tell, is 41283-8. Now, on this particular machine, um, it would appear that the update doesn't go through. It doesn't even attempt to go through. Actually, all that happens is, is that this error here displays on screen, and that's as far as it gets. So it'll actually boot into safe mode, there's no uh, data on the hard disk at all, uh, so it would appear it's been initialised previously. Uh, it runs through the initial part of the update in safe mode, and then once it reboots into the actual software update, as you can see there, it just throws this message straight up. It doesn't even attempt to run through. So this is what we're going to look at today. So more often than not, uh, the 41283-8 issue is down to either a Bluetooth Wi-Fi module fault or a firmware issue. Now this particular machine is only on software version 2.03 which is quite old. So what we're going to do is we are going to dump the firmware from here. Luckily I think I do have an old dump kicking around from back then which we should be able to uh, use to patch the firmware if there's a fault in there and uh, from there we can try and re-upgrade it. If that still fails, then we'll have to replace the module on this board, and hopefully that will work. So we will initially have a look at this. We'll dump the firmware. We'll take a look, and hopefully that's going to fix our issue. Albeit, like I say, we may end up having to replace the hardware, but uh, hopefully not. So uh, join us in a second, boys and girls, when we've got the, uh, the firmware chip off the machine. Uh, if you are in doubt as to what to do here, we do have... Uh, some tutorials already on the channel which I'll put in the description below on how you can actually dump uh, the firmware and patch it up from start to finish. Uh, we'll actually show you the procedure hopefully all being well on the laptop today uh, but as far as actually building the programmer and getting the programmer sorted out and working with your machine uh, I'll link those videos in the description below. So we will cut to the machine when we dump the firmware and we'll hopefully get some joy. So join us in a set boys and girls and uh, see what we can do. Alright, okay then, ladies and gentlemen. So, what we're going to do now is dump our firmware. So, if you to pay attention to the uh, tutorial videos linked in the description, that'll tell you all you need to know as far as what equipment you're going to need and how to set that equipment up and get it working. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is dump the firmware from that PlayStation using this tool here called SPIWay. Now, as I say, if you pay attention and you watch through that tutorial series in the description, you will completely understand this. Uh, we're just going to skip over it. So, of course, we're going to call the script. It's a Python script, spiway.py, space, com3, because that's the com port that our programming hardware is talking on. And then we're going to ask it for the info, and we're going to make sure that this returns some valid information, which it does, so we can see it's uh, returning the Macronics. Uh, MX25 L2 5635FIC it's 32 megs in size so that's all good and we are going to dump this in as friendly a place as possible so we're just going to put it in the root of C in a folder called PS4 and that's where we're going to leave it so unfortunately it's not um, a part of SPIWay's uh, nature to create folders on the fly. So if that folder doesn't exist, the dump will actually fail. So you need to make sure that the folder you're going to dump to exists before you do it. And then once you've actually done that, in order to get this thing to dump, you need to issue it a command, which is spiway.py. Of course, we're going on COM3 again. And we are going to dump. And we're going to dump it to c colon backslash ps4. And Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to dump our firmware 
Right, okay, then, ladies and gentlemen. So, if you actually uh, watch our tutorial series in, that I've linked in the description, that'll show you everything you need to do as far as the hardware you're going to require, how to assemble that hardware and get it working on your PC, so that you can actually go ahead and dump this and, and get this thing to work, hopefully. So, we are going to use this t uh, command line tool called SPI Way. Again, everything on here that we're going to be doing is thoroughly explained in great detail in the tutorial series linked below. So I'll pop those below and feel free to go ahead and go watch those and then come back here because to be honest you're probably going to want to do that in order to understand thoroughly what we're doing. So anyway, we want to make sure now we have our programmer and our firmware chip all hooked up to our PC. So now all we want to do is actually get the firmware off it and then we can check it and make sure that that's not the root of our issue. So in order to do that we are going to fire a command SPI away which is spiway.py, it's a Python script. We're going to tell it to look at COM port 3 because from Device Manager, uh, that's what we know our programming module is actually talking on, is COM port 3. Uh, we want to uh, then check the info. So that's the first thing you should do, make sure you get some valid information back. As you can see here, we have all the information about our IC, the Mechronics MX25L25635FIC, 32 megs, that's cool. So what we're going to do now is we are going to dump the firmware and we're going to dump it to C colon backslash PS4 backslash and we're going to call it orig.bin. So you do need to give it a full path with a file name and an extension and SPIWay unfortunately doesn't have it within itself to create these folders on the fly so you are going to need to go and create the folder that you wish to dump to before you dump it, otherwise the dump will fail. So as you can see there we've got CPS4 and we are going to call this orig.bin and we're going to dump away, so we're going to hit enter and as you can see there now at the bottom we've started to dump our firmware. So we're going to leave this to go, I'm going to uh, just leave this to run through. So you notice at the start of the video uh, we had the uh, the camera pointing at the display to try and show you what's happening there. I have actually managed to eventually get around the HDCP issues with PlayStation 4s and capturing the video from those, which is really quite cool. It required another little box to plug everything into, um, which, you know, was a bit of a pain, but we got there in the end. Well, you're not. No, I'm not the Oh, right, okay. All right. Well, I'll bye bye. S bye, -bye. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, what we're doing is you'd notice there. Like I say, we we managed to eventually uh, get around that as, as irritating as it is. We also have a fibre connection in the office now, so my internet's nice and quick. Um, so that will enable us to get on with some live streaming. Uh, I do have all the kit I need now to do that. It's just getting it all plumbed in and set up, and you know working nicely so that's my next job so hopefully shouldn't be too far away on doing some of that which will be really quite cool so as you can see here we are just approaching the 17 meg mark I'm going to text my missus while we're waiting for that to happen so I'm just going to leave this to run through because you know it's important you can see just how long it takes it's not a quick thing by any stretch of the imagination it's a serial connection for all intents and purposes So we're coming up now to the 25 meg mark. So we're nearly done now. So we're approaching the 30 meg mark, so we're nearly finished here. But yeah, just to uh, just to finish off on on the, this actual error, it is indeed down to some form of firmware or mo physical module issue. Um, it, it's a little bit more serious because, to be honest, on the later firmwares, they tend to go through okay without 
without too much. This is the first one I've seen with with encryption. So with um, with update issues, uh, but apparently it can happen if if the issue is severe enough. So what we're going to do now is we're not going to exit. We're going to do that again. But this time we're going to call it OIG2. I'm going to dump away. We're going to do this two or three times. Twice is probably enough, um, to be honest with you. Uh, three times if you want to be safe. But essentially what we do is once we've split out the information that we need from the overall dump, we compare all the dumps together. So effectively it confirms that we've got the exact same dump several times over, byte for byte. The chances of uh, two or three dumps being corrupt in the exact same fashion um, would be, you know, probably better chance of getting struck by lightning. So that's why we dump it several times. It's not because we need. Well, it is part because we need to, but we don't actually need to for the repair side of things. We just need to do it just for for a sanity check. It's absolutely red hot here in West Yorkshire today. It is. The guy looked at the car earlier on, it was about 28 degrees. And for those of you who don't know England's climate, it's uh, if you're in the in the luxuries of European holiday destinations, then your humidity is quite low, but your temperatures are quite high. So it's hot. It's hot, but it's manageably hot. You know, I don't like it particularly hot, but I can cope with it. But when it's over here and it's like this, the humidity is up at like 98%. Um, so it's oppressive. It's really, really oppressive. You know, at 25 degrees, it's oppressively hot. Which might sound a little bit weird, but for those of you who don't know, coming to England, when it's like, this is no fun. Unless you've got an ice bucket and a swimming pool. And beer. And a day off work. You know, but, um... That's not us. So anyway, we're coming up to 23 meg mark on the second dump. These gloves are stuck to my hands. Nice and sweaty today. I'm just thankful you can't see me. <laughs> Probably look like I've just stepped out of the shower. Certainly, climbed, yeah, certainly thankful you can't smell me. Bloody hell! Done quite a few HDMI port replacements today, so you know the air one's been kicking off, and it soon warms up in here. So coming up to the end of dump two. Excellent. So now we are going to exit. We're only going to dump it twice. I'd probably recommend you dump it three times, to be honest, if I was you. But um, so we're gonna we're gonna call uh, originals is what we're gonna create a new folder. And we're just gonna drag those two dumps into there. We're not gonna touch those, but we are going to make a copy of our dot bin. In fact, no, we're not. We're not gonna do that yet. What we are gonna do is we're gonna open both of these with a hex editor. We are using HXD today. Other hex editors are available, but this one's bloody nice. So and it's free. So, you know, why not? So we're gonna go into our CPS4 folder. Originals. So we're gonna open origin.bin and we're gonna open origin two dot bin. For the job like. And then we are gonna go down to extras. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to go to Analysis, File, Compare, Compare, or Control K if you like your keyboard shortcuts. And you can see there we have Orig2.bin selected in one of the boxes and Orig.bin selected in the other. It doesn't matter which one of these is in which box, as long as you've got Orig.bin in one and Orig2 in the other. Hit OK. And you can see there that we get a message saying the chosen files are identical. Cracking. That's exactly what we want. So. Now we've done that, we can close those. Now then, what we don't want to do is mess about with the originals. So we're going to take a copy of those. Well, we're going to take a copy of orig.bin. We don't need orig2. That was purely there for verification purposes. 
So we aren't going to touch anything in that folder. Those stay as they are because they're they're the root point that we can always go back to. So we're going to open oig.bin. I'm just going to change my file association on this machine because it's the first time I've used it on here. It's probably under the x86 programs. Hxd, it is indeed. There we go. Fantastic. So that's that. Okay, so we know that's good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use this other little thing here called PS4 Acid Flash Tool. Again, this is all explained in the tutorials if you go. We're going to go into the Extract option and we're going to select our dump from CPS4 Omig. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to save that in C, PS4. So basically what this program does is it splits out all the various bits and pieces of the firmware so it's a bit easier to understand what's going on. So we're going to create a new folder here called Extracted and OK that and Extract now. OK, so you should see then that the NOR dump is successfully extracted. Say OK to that. Close that window. Close that window happy days. Okay so now I've actually extracted all the various bits and pieces of the firmware using the acid flash tool I now need to go into HXD and compare a known good working version of the firmware to ours that we suspect is knackered. So to do that what we're going to do is we're going to go into the location where we extracted our dump which of course is CPS4 extracted. You get this folder called flash extracted and you're interested in this file here c00200001.bin now then, in our instance, we're going to go right click properties and we're going to have a look at the size. So, not the size on disk, but the actual size. So in our case, it's 450,940 bytes long. Okay, so remember that number. What we're going to do is we are going to double click that to open it up in HXD. Now then, what I'm going to do is I am going to, and if you have a look again in those tutorials down in the description, the links to the download for these known good versions of firmware are below. But essentially I'm going to compare this sec this little file here with a known good version. So C002001.bin actually contains the Bluetooth Wi-Fi module firmware for your PS4. And what we have here, uh, working examples... You can see here that we have one for 450,940 bytes, which of course, remember that number from a couple of seconds ago? Okay, so this file here that we've just opened is the complete working, known working version. So what we should do, if we have any issues, in, if we have any differences in here, we are going to want to fix them. So we go down to analysis file compare compare or control K again as we did earlier, and you'll notice this time that the source file is our working example that we've just opened and the target file is our extracted firmware okay so we say okay to that now then if you get a message as earlier on which says there are no differences and the files are identical then your issue is probably with the module and you should look at changing the module in our instance we can see that HXD has found some differences and a quite a big difference as well. Now then, for firmware corruption, it can literally be one bit. And when I say one bit, I mean literally one of these little blocks can change by literally just one letter, one number, and the whole thing can not work. Okay? So, in those instances where you have a really tiny sort of, you know, a bit that's flipped or whatever else, you probably find that the firmware will update, but your controllers won't sync. In issues like this one, and our and the one we've we've pulled off our PlayStation here, you can see has a massive bank of Fs. So the blue text is where it highlights the first difference. Okay, you can see in the working version it sh it just looks like gobbledygook. Again, from the same point where it's identified the first difference. If we look in our file, look, it's just a big bank of Fs. Like if you go further down, you'll see it's absolutely just swarming with Fs. Ouch. Okay. So, <laughs> that's not good. Okay, so those Fs there are a big problem. So Fs in hex speak, because this is hex code, Fs is basically blank space. Nothing. 
So that's definitely not good. So if you've got a big bank of nothing in there and the PlayStation is expecting something, i.e. it's expecting to update some firmware, but you can't see any firmware there to update, guess what? Your PlayStation update process is going to fall over. It's going to give you a nice error message and you're not going to get any further, which is what's happening to us. So we know that uh, indeed our firmware has a big issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to close our corrupted bin file and we're going to leave open this nice working version. We're going to go back to the top of here and we're going to go to edit and we're going to select all which is at the bottom, or control A and then we're going to go into edit and we're going to copy. Okay, so that's copied the entire good version of firmware to our clipboard. We're now going to open our orig.bin we copied earlier on which was in C uh, PS4 orig.bin. Okay, so this is our complete full firmware file. What we're going to do is we are going to jump to an offset. So an offset is basically an address within this file. So you think how many lines are in here? There's thousands of them. So it's a useful way of of, refer, of referring to each line. Each line has its own address and it increments in hex code. Okay, it's not important, but basically we are going to go to so search go to or control G. And we're going to uh, go to. Uh, we're going to make sure that the offset is one four four two hundred, and this hex box is ticked, and begin is basically checked. Okay, and we're going to say okay. So you're probably wondering why. Okay, well, in the big, big sort of firmware file we're in at the moment, our firmware code starts at one four four two hundred. Okay, so that's the line it starts on. So that's where we are there. So if we go into 20001.bin, remember we copied everything here, and you can see that we have a length of 6E17C. 6E17C. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Edit, we're going to select Block, and we're going to go down to Length, and we're going to put 6E71C. Okay, so that length was at the bottom, so I'll show you that again. But essentially, whatever that length is, you want to type in there. Again, make sure hex is checked and OK. And that's going to select, essentially, that same space that our firmware resides in, right in our main firmware file. So you can see 6E71C. Oh, shit, I've selected the wrong bit. OK. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. 6E17C. I did wonder with all the zeros there, actually. So, if you bugger that up like I just did, I'm just going to go back to go to. I'm going to go back to the same offset. Okay, just click anywhere at the start of that line. That'll deselect everything. So, it was what? six. So, the length here at the bottom, 6E17C. 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 Okay, that looks better. Look, because there you go. Because right at the end of the um, right at the end of the selection, look at the zeros. And zero is basically padding. So it's not blank space; it's padding. It is different. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go edit. Remember, we copied our entire good section of firmware, and this time we're going to go to paste right. Okay, or Control B. Paste insert will put everything we've copied beforehand, so effectively you'll end up with two copies of firmware in the main firmware file. The firmware file will no longer be 32 meg, it will be bigger, it won't go back on the chip, and if it did go back on the chip, you bugger your PlayStation. So make sure you get the right one, okay? So paste right or control B, and you'll notice that all that text then goes red. The red text highlights any changes in the file, so... so as you can see there now, we should have absolutely no... Um, F's at all, and it doesn't look like we do. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and this time we're going to call this Orig underscore fixed is probably a good one. So we're going to save that. Okay. Now then, if you're absolutely paranoid that you haven't done this right, what you can do, okay, what you can do is I'm just going to copy that extracted folder into the originals because at the end of the day that's what it is. So if you if you are convinced that maybe oh if it does that and it just saves it as a file, you just want to put a dot bin extension on there. There you go. 
So if you're if you're paranoid you haven't done that right, or you want to double check you've done it right, go back into Acid Flash and extract the one we've just saved. So the Orig fixed, okay, and just extract that one somewhere. So we'll we we will go to see PS4, okay, and we'll just leave it there. So we'll say okay, and go extract now. Okay, it's going to say it's for being successfully extracted. What we can then do is it creates this flash extracted folder again. I'm going to go in there. We're going to pick our c20001.bin file from there. Okay, and then we're going to go and open our template, so our, our one we know that works and works well. PS4, BIOS dumps, working examples. Remember ours was a 450,940 byte file going to say OK and we're going to open those. OK so we have our known working one there selected. Open here in this tab is the one that we've just repaired. Going to go to analysis, file compare, compare. OK you can see that there. No trickery or smoke and mirrors. I'm going to say OK. The chosen files are identical. If you get that you can be pretty certain that you've done it properly and that you, you're you good to go. So we're just going to delete that folder because we don't need it. We're going to delete a rig because we no longer need it. And we are going to flash this fi rig fixed back to our IC. And we do that by going back to SPI way. This time we are going to call spiway.py, com3 remember. This time we are going to go to vwrite and we are going to point it c colon backslash uh, ps4 backslash orig underscore fixed dot bin. So vwrite, essentially there's two commands, there's write and vwrite. vwrite will basically verify what the program has written whilst it's writing it. So it will compare what's written on the IC to what's in the file it's just written to verify that what's on the chip is indeed what is on or what is inside the file we've just repaired. So it makes sure that everything is just as it should be. You can just do write, it is quicker but you run the risk of uh, possible shenanigans going on there and of course if you put that back in your PlayStation you may brick it. This is firmware remember uh, it is very easy to brick things it's not just a case of um, oh well I'll just you know reflash it you may not have that chance um, you know it can send portions you know updates uh, out to other ICs on the board uh, I have seen it and I have heard of it on several occasions where somebody's misedited the file uh, or they've rewritten a co copy back to the chip, put the chip in the machine, and it's just cycled constant pulse in blue light. I, when I was trying to work this out myself way back when, I did it to a to a crap machine I had as well. So I know you can do it. So trust me, use VWrite and just wait for two minutes. Okay, <laughs> you'll thank me later. So as you can see there, um, we can see our chip information. That's going to write everything back to our IC. It's only written 64k for some reason. And it's stopped. That's not that's not a good sign. What's it doing that for? Okay. So that's a bit weird. <laughs> I think it's crashed. Oh no. Oh well, that's that's a bit of a strange one. So I just close that. Uh, let's have a look. Oh dear, Hang on, the teensy's gone down. That's never a good thing, is it? Eh, hey, what can you do? The joys of a live bloody... Well, luckily we're not live streaming this. But I'll probably leave it in. So I've just unplugged and replugged in the, uh, the teensy board, so... Oh dear. Com3 info... Yeah, there we go. So this time, spiway.py. This time we're not going to be lazy, and we're going to give it the command erase chip. I think it's erase chip. Yes, it is. Erase chip, all one word. So it might look like it's not doing a great deal, but uh, in reality, it is. So unlike when it dumps and it writes, it doesn't actually give you a progress as to how far through the IC it's got. You can see there it took it 1 minute 38. So now we're going to fire our vwrite command back at it. So com3 we're going to vwrite. 
and we're going to go from C colon backslash PS4 and of course we called it ovig underscore fixed dot bin okay and you can see there now that we're happily writing away and that's uh, the values uh, for the writer actually incrementing quite nicely there so it looks like well, well that's not good is it <laughs> device setup I've asked bloody windows update isn't it <laughs> Ah, uh, oh my god, Windows. I don't know what the bloody hell it's just been doing there, but that's really annoying. Right, so, and it's now lost Teensy, so I'm going to have to unplug it again, aren't I? Well, God knows what Windows was trying to install there, but it's just completely bugging access to my thing. Right, here we go. So, I'm going to have to close all of it. Right. Let's try that again. Shouldn't be too much longer now. I do wish they'd put a like a a progress thing in here just to sort of let you know how how it's coming along. There we go, one minute thirty nine. Okay, so I'm gonna try that again. So this time hopefully something isn't gonna stick its ten penithin halfway through writing the bloody firmware. <sighs> Dumb. Marvellous. Well, it's not done, is it? That's just <laughs> that's just it. Let's try again. No, ping failed. Right, so something a little bit weird is going on here. It is actually plugged into USB hub. I'm wondering if the hub is buggered. Oh, it's just not very good. Let's get rid of the hub. Let's get rid of the hub. Let's try again. Uh, it's cost me fingers and my toes. So all this is going to take a while, uh, as you can see. You know, it's been going about 10-15 seconds. It's just about done a meg. So it's going to take about five or six minutes to do a full write. Um, so it's going to take a little while. So I'm probably going to cut this at the end here, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see just what's going on uh, at the end. So essentially, we're just going to wait till this is finished. Looks like my USB hub is slightly iffy. <laughs> bloody thing. So there's one for you. If you're trying to do this through a hub, probably best off just to take the hub out of uh, out of the equation, just to be safe and have a direct connection between the programmer and your laptop or your PC or whatever it is you're using to, to do this. But yeah, so you can see there we're on around sort of just over 3 meg. So yeah, this is going to take probably 6, 7, 8 minutes or so to do. So I'm going to do some tidying up while waiting. So uh, I'll probably jump cut it here, and I'll see you back once uh, once the right is finished. All right, okay, then, ladies and gentlemen. So you can see there, it took 11 minutes and 16 seconds in the end. Um, yeah, so that's all fully written back to the chip, and of course, because we used the verify write, we can be fairly sure that what's in that bin file is on that IC. So that's great. So we're going to inject that now. And uh, once we've done that, of course, we are free to go and reinstall this chip back on our PlayStation. So that's what we're going to do. We will reinstall this chip, pop it back on the PlayStation, and then we'll try and run through the uh, the firmware upgrade again. And hopefully, this time, rather than getting uh, 41283-8, hopefully this time, we're going to get a working PlayStation. All right, okay then, ladies and gentlemen. So we can see here we have our PlayStation reassembled, and ready to go. So if you can hear any popping in the background, that's the neighbour's bike. <sighs> There's a bunch of noisy buggers around here today, I tell you. So, what we're going to do now... Sounds like the bloody crazy frogs parked outside my front door. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to change the input over and we're going to start the machine. Okay, and if we're going to point you up there, we'll zoom in on the display now that I've got 10 minutes of battery left on this camera. So what's your betting? This is going to cock it before we get there. Luckily, it's going to resume from the system software update screen, so... 
So that's good. We don't, he's not going to go back into safe mode. It's cache the installer onto the hard disk. Okay, well, we're getting further than we did before because we didn't even get this far last time. Previously, uh, the system software update screen would it would come up and it would just go bang. You wouldn't even get this uh, percentage bar. You wouldn't even get any attempt to install the firmware. It would literally just fall flat on its face. So the fact it's attempting to uh, install the firmware, for me, is a positive sign. Oh, sh**. Do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job I checked that then, the camera wasn't actually recording. Right again, ladies and gentlemen, so a bit of a balls up on my part. Um, I can't believe that, I didn't set the bloody video camera recording. Anyway, <laughs> you can see it is around 34% of the way through the update. So we didn't even get this far before, we didn't even get the uh, installation bar at all. It literally, the system software update screen would come up as it would normally do and it just hit you with the message straight away. Um, so the fact that we've even got an attempt to install and we've got the percentage bar and the fact we're even 50% of the way through to me at least seems like a good sign. So that's cool. So those of you who you know are wanting to know, the console itself is down there. Okay, there you go. There she is. Pulsing away there. Of course, the blue light does pulse during the system software update. So we're on 65%. So, as I say, I have actually managed to um, circumnavigate the uh, HDCP issue, which was stopping us capturing video from the PS4. Uh, so, hopefully, you know when I've got all the uh, the new kit rigged up and, and everything it should be looking quite swanky hopefully and we'll be able to capture this live and put it in the video actually you know as it's on the display there which would be really quite cool uh, yep I haven't got it set up yet though and, uh, and for those of you who may have missed earlier um, apparently I we're getting fibre in this office which is marvellous apparently keep it quiet there <laughs> Um, I don't know if it's gone active yet, to be honest. It does seem a little bit quicker to use in here, but then I'm sort of rigged up to a, a secondary router and it's probably double nutted and everything else. So anyway, so the PlayStation's gone down, so it's just I've just had the relay click and then the blue lights have come back on, so it's going to start back up. So let's see what we get this time. Oh yes, PlayStation logo. So there you go. There's the... Uh, there's the console there, USB stick with the uh, latest 4.55 firmware on there and uh, the controller USB lead, you can just about see the controller there happy days so we are just about done there I think you can just about see it start to go into uh, into the main menu there and it's telling us to connect to controller so let's have a look back down there look there you go, now you can see it's got a white light on the top of it uh, fantastic. So, we have our controller connected via the USB. So, let's see if we can get this in shot for you. Okay, so that's the front light there. Oh yes, we have sync. I'm going to unplug that USB lead now. And, uh, and there you go. So, USB lead still synced and our controller is working absolutely beautifully so we're just going to skip through this installer uh, yep, that'll do. it's actually not the correct date and time but I can sort that later not particularly bothered at this juncture fantastic user one in we go we're in light Flynn fantastic let's put a game disc in it I've not been having much luck with these recently. It's been a case of you fix one problem and find another, which has been really irritating. Just raise you up a bit. Okay, so 
probably just right jinxed it now, haven't I? <laughs> okay. So we're going to be going into FIFA 15. Seven minutes of battery left. Time this one well. And is it going to start? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, as you can see there, we fixed it. So this particular firmware error uh, is actually down to either corruption of the Bluetooth Wi-Fi module firmware or a potentially defective uh, IC uh, on the actual mainboard itself uh, or even down to a physically faulty module. So if you dumped your firmware off and actually found no fault then indeed you would have an issue with the module and you should replace the module. So that's all good. So we've learnt something new there today or at least I'd like to think we've learnt something new there today. Hopefully we have and uh, as you can see there now it's, it's working absolutely perfectly. So I know it's been a it's been a couple of weeks since I've uploaded the video. I do have some stuff but it's just I've just not really had time to edit it this week. So four one two it's SU four one two eight three dash eight is another error that we've managed to conquer on this channel, which is fantastic. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh we're gonna have a slight change to the end of this video uh today because as is always the way, sometimes real life comes up and bites you square on the arse. And, um, you know, normally at this point I would obviously thank you for watching, as I do thank you for watching. And I would indeed uh, ask you to comment, rate and subscribe to you know the video and, and give us a thumbs up if you liked it and it was helpful. And of course I still ask you for those things. Uh, but I would also like to ask uh, you all uh, just to spare... Uh, a couple of moments thought today, of course, for the victims of Monday evening's really tragic disaster here in the UK, uh, where some terrorist bastard managed to uh, get at a concert full of kids. Of course, the Ariana Grande uh, concert in Manchester the other night. Uh, it kind of hits home when a colleague of mine at work um, was there when it happened, and thankfully they're okay and their family's okay, but of course there are families and people there that, that didn't get so lucky. Um, so if you can spare a moment just to give a, a bit of thought to those people that are, are affected in that in that uh, tragedy then that would be much appreciated and of course you know if if you are watching this uh, because obviously you know there are people from from this area from the Leeds area um, which have lost their lives in that in that tragedy um, then of course um, it, it just brings it home and um, it's, it's not good but you know, so yes, uh, if you are, of course, from the area or you are um, affected or impacted at all uh, by what went off Monday night, then um, just know that my heart and my thoughts uh, and my prayers are with you. Um, so that being said, but as you can see there, we're working and, uh, and we're all good. Uh, as I say, the fibre broadband is coming in here. Hopefully, if it isn't already working, then it will be in a couple, you know, at least the next couple of weeks. Uh, I've managed to sort of overcome some of the video issues. There's still one little thing I could do with getting over, but it, I, I can work around it. So, um, all been well. Um, we should be able to get on with the live streaming uh, within, hopefully, within a couple of weeks. Um, so, hopefully, you found this useful. And. Um, as I say, please remember to give us a like and a thumbs up and, you know, drop a comment and subscribe to the channel. If this has been useful for you, I've been Andy Paul. You have been marvellous as always. And um, this console was knackered and is now fixed. So um, thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Hopefully this time, you know, I've been, I've been quite good recently. I've been managing to get stuff uploaded. Oops. I've been managing to get stuff uploaded. So sort of like on a weekly basis, really. Um, but this week's just been a bit of a bugger with everything. So, um, so yeah, um, as I say, hopefully, not too distant future, hopefully this time next week we'll have another video for you. So I've plenty filmed, plenty of uh, rushes in the old laptop. Uh, it's just a case of getting them all sliced together. I've got, I'm halfway through some stuff as well. Um, so, yeah, we should be okay. So, yes, thank you for watching. Thanks for joining us. And I will see you very shortly, hopefully, on the next vid. So for me, it's bye-bye uh, for now.
Many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come.